Kevin Fernandez, and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite deck building games. And for those of you who didn't hear me correctly, that is D E C K building games. Okay? I'm not being dirty. This is a family channel, okay? Children watch these videos, I think. I don't know. Um, but anyways, for those of you who are new to the board gaming hobby or new to this kind of term or concept, a deck building game is a game where you get a little deck of cards. Um, traditionally, this number is 10. Um, sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less, but traditionally the most common number I've seen, at least, is 10. And once you, what you do is you spend a, a certain amount of points to get a card, to get a card, add that to your deck by either stacking it on the top of the deck or putting it in your discard pile. And as the game progresses, your deck will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger until eventually you win the game. And so these are my 10 favorite of those types of games. So without further ado, let's count down. Okay, so number 10 is The Lost Ruins of Arnak. Um, I really do enjoy this game. I, I play it digitally. I don't really have a physical copy of it. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I like how there's different ways you can proceed through the board and uh, there's different ways you can score points. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of strategy to it. So uh, the reason why this is number 10 is because this is not... Um, this is not exactly, uh, I've not really played this one as often as a lot of the other games that i played. Um, but I, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there. I'm, I'm trying to play this game more. It, it's just, it takes quite a bit of time. Um, yeah, I like the theme. I like the artwork. Um, I don't know how much of this I can say without, like, the last time I played this game, I lost. Because um, I didn't quite get the concept of it, but I, I'm getting better. And um, it's a, yeah, it's a very enjoyable game. I highly recommend it. Number 10, Lost Ruins of Arnag. Okay, number 9 is Dominion. This is like one of the first, if not the first, deck building games. Um, it takes place in the medieval times. Um, you can, you can go through all sorts of stuff. See, there's like seafaring, there's, uh, intrigue, uh, alchemy, corticopia, original, dark ages. There's all sorts of things you can add on to this. And you basically, you spend gold, silver, or copper to get more cards and add to your deck. But the main thing you want to get is estates. Um, because the one, the player with the most points wins. If you get, and the game ends when you uh, get rid of all the Providence cards, or I believe it was either three or four of one stack, three or four different stacks. Um, this is a really fun game. It is one of the first deck builders I've ever played. Um, it's probably one of the first deck builders that most of the people who watch this channel um, play, have played. It's still going strong, so it's doing something right. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what I can say about this game. I love it. I love the theme. I love, um, I love how you can really mess with people. Um, and of course, I love to quote Monty Python whenever we play with the witch. Because then I can say, how do you know she's a witch? And then someone can say, well, she turned me into a newt. And then I could go, she turned you into a newt. And they'll be like, well, I got better. <laughs> and, uh, I... I I have so much fun with this um, this game, Dominion, and one of the things, though, is that one player who can be like, okay, I'm going to play this card, which gives me another action, and this gives me two more actions, this gives me... and they got, like, this row of cards to just see how many actions you can do in one turn. It's crazy. Number nine, Dominion. Okay, so number eight is another relatively new game called The Loop. Um, I really like this game. It's really fun. Jordan and I have, like, we recently just finished playing The Loop. We, uh, I like it. I don't know how Jordan feels about it. 
she she says she likes it. Okay. Um, and it's really cool. We did our gameplay video on it and everything. I'll probably put the whole playlist on there somewhere. And this time, Jordan didn't fall asleep. She doesn't like it that I bring that up. When we were in Gen Con last year, she kind of fell asleep when we were learning the loop. Uh, she doesn't like it that I bring it up. I'm going to pay for that later, but uh, <laughs> worth it. Um, I like all the different characters and their powers. I love the different cards, um, the different areas in time. Very creative. Um, this is a very imaginative, very colorful game. Um, yeah, I would definitely say the designers of this game really did a great job. I understand that there is an expansion either coming out or is out, Fozilla. Um, I don't know how that is. If, if you guys have played Fozilla, let me know in the comments below how it is. Um, I really do love the loop and from what I understand from my friends from the nerd shelves is if you do love fo uh, the the loop then you'll love the expansion too which is good because I do love it um, so number eight the loop okay number seven is a pretty big one for me I do like this game a lot I like it's it's not as big as like a lot of the other games I just mentioned Kind of literally, it's pretty small. Uh, this one is called Abandon All Artichokes by Game Right. Um, I like Abandon All Artichokes. The goal of the game is to make sure you draw a hand of cards that doesn't have artichokes in it. And you do this by playing different vegetables like a carrot, broccoli, onions, a beet. Uh, you drop a beet and, uh, you know, you, uh, you take a leak, you know. Drop a beat, take a leak. Uh, you can do a lot of vegetable puns with that. So if you know a lot of vegetable puns, you could probably drive your friends crazy by playing that game. If you don't know a lot of vegetable puns, you'll start thinking of them pretty, of them pretty quickly, trust me. Um, but like I said, the goal of the game is to try to abandon all the artichokes in your hand till when you draw a new hand, you have only vegetables. Uh, no artichokes, which is a vegetable, but you only have normal vegetables, not artichokes. You know, you don't have a heart. Uh, gosh, I work, man, I, I thought of that one while I was working in a produce section at Jewel last year. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, this is one of those games where a lot of people uh, I like did it, although granted my mom and my brother got confused and they thought that you have to draw the whole deck. Um, in it and so they drew all all the all of the artichokes and I'm like okay how are you gonna abandon your artichokes if you don't have your deck it, it was funny and there, there was a lot of debate they, they even were like saying no this is how you play I'm like I know how to play this game you don't I'm teaching this game stop stop mouthing off to the teacher what the heck you get detention if we were in school I think I don't know I don't know if they have detention anymore who knows, yeah. Um, maybe they got rid of it. Who knows. But uh, yeah, number seven, abandon all artichokes. Okay, speaking of school, number six is Harry Potter, Hogwarts Battle. Uh, in this game, you can take on the role of Harry, Ron, Hermione, or Neville. And with if you have the expansions, you can add in Luna Lovegood and Ginny Weasley, um, as long and as well as adding a fifth player. In this game, basically, you have to fight the Death Eaters and Voldemort. Uh, you have to make sure you do this before they defeat completely defeat you. And there's multiple ways they can defeat you, and there's only one way you can defeat them. It's one of those games. Uh, I do like this game. It does take a lot from the movies, not the books. So if you're a fan of the a big fan of the books, this game is not for you, um, unfortunately. There is an old Harry Potter trading card game, which is still in print in certain parts of the world, just not the U.S. Um, and that one's based off of the book. But anyways, I'm talking about Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Yeah, in this game, like I said, you get what I like about this is your starting deck is very unique from your opponent, from your partner's starting decks. So like if you start as Harry, you get like the Firebolt, you get Hedwig, 
and you get um, the invisibility cloak. Oh my gosh. And then you get Flipendo, a bunch of copies of Flipendo. And if you start as Ron, you get uh, Birdie Bots Every Flavor of Beans, Pigwidgeon, and you get, um, I forgot what his broomstick is. Um, Clean Sweep 7, I think. Um, and, uh, and then you get a bunch of Flipendos. Hermione gets the Time Turner, Tales of Beetle the Bard, and Crookshanks, and then a bunch of Flipendos. And then Neville, you get Trevor, of course. You get the Remember All. Um, Trevor, Remember All. I don't think he gets a broom. I think that his item is the Remember All. And but then, then, anyways, you get a bunch of Flipendos. I think you get a Mandrake, too. But anyways, you have to use these cards, all these different allies and spells and items to try to help you to defeat the um, the bad guys. You have to go through the whole deck of bad guys and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you move through each uh, film. It goes from one to seven and the characters get more power and the, the characters get more powerful as you progress, but so do the main characters as well. So it's not just like it's a one-sided battle and everything. Um, I like it. I know Jordan does like it. Um, at least I hope she still does like it. I know there's a lot of controversy around Harry Potter. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, she. I believe she did, did say that. But we like playing it. It's fun. Uh, number six, Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Okay, number five is the game Marvel Legendary by Upper Deck Entertainment. This game is like uh, probably the favorite amongst both of our families where you get to build a deck based off of Marvel heroes from the comics, not the MCU. Although granted there is an expansion set with a lot of characters from the MCU. Actually it's a main set and then you can get an expansion of Spider-Man Homecoming where then Jordan will stare at a picture of Tom Holland in his Spider-Man costume all day because she had a big crush on him. She was very angry at me again. I'm just going to see how many times I can cause her to be angry at me in this video. Okay, so anyways, in this game you get, you get to pick a mastermind and then that mastermind gets like a set of villains that he always leads and you can add like, and you have to add like a certain number of uh, henchmen and of course, uh, some other villains. There's villains, henchmen, and then you got schemes, scheme twists. You got you got uh, master strikes, and you got all, and you got to protect like civilians and stuff like that. It's really cool. Uh, I just got the uh, new mutants expansion set for that, where you can go up against like demon bear and all that cool stuff. Uh, I do love this game because I'm a big Marvel fan. I love to see these comic book characters and being able to use all these different cards. Um, however, one of the major problems I have come across in this is people get the card because they look cool or because they're their favorite character. Uh, that can really cause some damage down the road in the game, as we've learned. Anyway, um, uh, my, my favorite character to use, though, I should, I should say, my favorite character to use is, of course, uh, I don't know yet. I, I don't think I really know. I do like Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is one of my favorite characters in this game. Um, I haven't used Namor yet, and he's my favorite character in the comics. Uh, but So I have to try that out. I haven't even really used like half the cards that I got. <laughs> I really do need to try the, some of these new cards. But I think I like um, Agent Coulson. I like Phil Coulson. I like his cards. Uh, one of my favorites is actually Nick Fury because he gets like stronger with more shield cards you play And so now that there's like an agents of shield um, Expansion set you just put Nick Fury in there and he just becomes a beast And I just love that. So yeah, number five Marvel legendary Okay, so number four is uh is also from the op and it is a deck builder it is less i don't know if these games are if that game was considered controversial 
but I don't know, more people seem to be getting into it. Anyways, number four is Toy Story Obstacles and Adventures. Um, everybody loves Toy Story. I don't know that many people who don't like Toy Story, and I bet now that I just said that, there's going to be somebody who's going to say in the comment, be in the com say in the comments like, I don't like Toy Story. But I mean, I've seen Toy Story 1, 2, 3, 4. I think um, Toy Story, the first one, is my favorite one still. Um, I would say number three would be my second favorite, and then number two, and then dead last would be, um, would be the fourth one. Um, I don't know. I just, I liked it. I still like it. I mean, like, it doesn't really matter where you put them, in my opinion, because I, I like Toy Story. It's, it's a good, it's a good series. It's a good solid movie series, and I think even though we didn't need a fourth one, I still think number four was a pretty solid movie. It was, it was good, but I would have been satisfied if they just ended it at three. I know a lot of people have been saying that, and I'm just kind of repeating what the internet's been saying, but that's, that is my opinion. Um, but, you know, I like them. I like the shorts. Um, I like how this one kind of fixes a lot of the rules in Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, and it even incorporates, uh, they even uh, suggest that you should incorporate that into your Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle game, and we do that. Uh, so one of the differences is when you draw a duplicate of a card, you just stack it on that card. You don't, uh, you don't just like keep going. Um, that's one of the differences. Um, but this one, you don't fight like enemies or anything. I believe you have to get through, um, obstacles. There's like different obstacles you have to get through. And then the last thing is kind of a boss. So you have to fight like Sid or Stinky Pete. Um, I don't know who else. I'm I'm assuming for the third one, you're you're going up against um, the guy, the teddy bear that smells like strawberries. Which I can't, Lotso, Lotso hugging stuff. Um, so yeah, I think Lotso is that one. I don't know. I haven't really. We haven't gotten past number two. We we uh, we lost at number two. It's a little more tougher than Harry Potter actually. Um, who would have thunk, you know? You'd think that one would be a little more friendly because, you know, it's like Disney and Pixar. And it's like, na 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 na, -na. Um, But no, it's it's a little more difficult. Uh, but you get to play as Woody and Rex and Buzz and Bo Peep and Jesse. Um, yeah, I, I really do. If you have kids or, you know, maybe Harry Potter's not your thing, I do recommend uh, Toy Story Obstacles and Adventures in its stead. Um... The artwork is really good. It's really interesting. It's not based off of their, like, 3D animation thing. It's kind of like when you look at the posters for stuff, it's like that. You know, the posters, the box art for their toys. That's what they're basing all the character things off of. But So it's really interesting. So uh, number four is Toy Story Obstacles and Adventures. Okay, so number three is Fort. Um, this is a four-player game by Leader Games. Uh, and it was actually originally based off of another game that wasn't quite successful. Um, Fort just kind of took that game, simplified it, gave it a little bit of more of a like identity. And I love Fort. Um, it's one of my favorite games. Uh, it's right up there. If you can't see it. Um, and, oh my gosh, yeah, I love this game so much. I got the expansion for, um, for Fort, the Cats and Dogs expansion, and I, I remember I got into a conversation after I watched the review on Blackboard Gaming, and they said that, um, if you do like Fort, um, you're gonna like this expansion. And I can definitely confirm after playing that, they were correct. They were very, very correct, because I do love the Cats and Dogs expansion. I like what the cats add, and I like what the dogs add as well. Um, I, <laughs> it was funny that Jordan, when we played it, managed to keep her cat throughout the whole game, because nobody else managed to get the, the goal she managed to get. It was really funny how, how long she met, and not only that, but she managed to steal a couple cats from other players, too. So she was really good. She... She really knew how to get get the cats over to her yard. <laughs> Open up a can of tuna. <laughs> Let them all come. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, uh, yeah. 
I, we like Fort. It's a real, it's a really fun game. I know Jordan wishes that there was a fifth player where the the fifth player plays as book characters, so Jordan can have a book character as a character to play as. Um, I know she's like, oh come on, just add a fifth board with a book. It's fine. Or don't even make it a fifth player. Just just make it an option. You know, swap it out. Keep it four players. Just have that board to swap it out. I want to play as the book character. Come on. Uh, yeah, but you know, I I do like the the different strategies, and I also like how me and my dad have like this little competition. Whoever gets like a a double of something sees who can put it in their uh in their fort, uh their look as a lookout uh first, because then we don't want anybody else to get it. We're just like, oh, um this the the sticky twins or whatever we stick them in there noodle twins put stick them in there i got double books yay so anyways number three fort okay well number two is the game dune imperium by dire wolf games uh i do love this game i love the movie it's it's good. It's super fun. I enjoy it very, very thoroughly. Um, in this game, you have to collect spice uh, to to get Solari. You have to get Solari to to do most stuff. Um, to do most stuff, but it's weird because you have to make that decision. Do you want to spend? Do you want to get Solari or do you want to keep your spice? Because you need spice to go to certain places on the board too. Um, there's a lot of strategy to this, and uh, you know, you you recruit cards, um, and they're all based off of characters from the movie that came out last year. Um, and uh, you know, this game is just amazing. I got the expansion, Rise of Ix. It is awesome. I I can say that Rise of Ix is awesome. Um, so, you know, if you're a fan of the Dune movies, I do recommend this game. Um, and its expansion, if you're up for it. Um, I don't know if you're a fan of the books. I don't know how that stands. But my dad is a fan of the books, and he likes the movie. Um, and he also likes the game. And we play it, like, pretty much every chance we get. Um, I like playing... Well, actually, I can't really say that my favorite character yet, because now, now I'm switching because of, I'm, I'm liking the Rise of X characters now, too. But anyways, number two, Dune Imperium. All right, my number one is the game Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. Of course it is. Uh, I've talked about how much I love this game. Um, it's probably one of my favorite games of all time. Uh... I got it right behind me. Um, in this game, you're it's a racing game and it's a deck building game. It's like, it's so, so great. You can try to keep all three of your ships equally going forward on the board. You could not. There's a chance where you can't. Um, and you just, like, one will just stay back and the other two will just, like, speed forward. You can pull over on islands and get supplies and treasure and stuff like that. You can collect different, like, treasure tokens. You can, there's so many ways to get, like, victory points and everything. So chances are you don't need to be the first one at the last island in order to win. That's one of the things I love about this game. Um, I mean, I'm, a, I'm also a sucker for pirate games. I love pirates. Um, and I had to get this game at, uh, I believe this, I got this at the 20, I think I got this at the 2019 Gen Con. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I did. Oh yeah, I got the Extraordinary Adventures Pirates and my dad got Raccoon Tycoon. Um, but yeah, I love this game. Uh, I don't care if anybody else doesn't like it. Uh, it's awesome, in my opinion. Uh, I like playing as... Plus, it's got purple. So sue me. I like playing with I like playing games with purple in it, too. So it's got pirates and purple. It's got two of my favorite things. Uh, I also like playing with the pirates, where they can give you some extra points if you rescue them off of the islands. But if someone else get gets them first, they can get some extra points too as well. 
Uh, I don't recommend the advanced game for anybody who's new to that game. Definitely try out the basic game first before you decide I want to do the advanced game. But other than that, and there is a, I also want to mention, there is an upgrade kit where you can uh, upgrade your pirates to look more um, three-dimensional. Uh, they're just pirate meeples in that. Um, so, yeah, that being said, number one is Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. Well, there you go. There are my top ten favorite deck building games. Um, if you have any favorite deck building games that maybe I'm, well, I probably didn't miss them because I, anyways, if there's any, <laughs> if there's a, a, some, some favorite deck builders that you like, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to hear that. Um, I wouldn't say like I missed them, uh, you know, cause you know, I know there's a lot of deck builders out there, but, uh, these are just my favorites. Uh, so yeah. And I, like I said, I'd love to hear you, uh, for your opinions on this. Um, what are your favorite deck builders? Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified for videos just like this. And if you're a big fan of the channel as a whole, consider becoming a Patreon supporter on our Patreon page. Uh, one of the benefits of being a Patreon supporter is you get early access to uh, how to play videos. Uh, not like this one, because it's not a how to play video. It's a top 10 uh, video. But you also can get your name in the credits as a producer. That's one of the benefits uh, as for being a Patreon supporter as well. So uh, feel free to check that out. Uh, be on the lookout for our next top tens list. This is March in April, which once I figure out what that is, that'll, that'll come out. <laughs> but until then, thanks for the views.